Bye, Candy. We're going to miss you. Take care. I'm gonna miss her so much. She's like a divine light in this world. And wise, too. <sighs> Come on, Leafy. We gotta keep up. Well, look, there's a small village there. Maybe we can go and get supplies. We're running a bit low. Good idea. Soon it'll get dark and we better find a safe place to stay. Oh, it's so calm. You can almost hear the sound of silence. <gasps> that would make a good song. Wait, is that a sheep? Yeah, this is strange. They usually travel in herds. Let me see if I can help. Oh hey, calm down. You're safe. Are you lost? Really? I understand. But your family will be worried. I know. They care about you. They take hmm. good care of you. I'm wondering what, what they're, they're talking, talking about. about. Maybe we should take it them seems back. so what weird talking to them. What do you say? But it's cool. What, what kind of voice could it possibly have? Lovette, Mr. Rule here would like us to take him back to his owner. Can we help him? His owner is called Ida. Mr. Wool? Oh, that's so cute. Of course. Of course we'll help him. Let's go and find her. Mr. Wool? Mr. Wool? <sighs> Where is that sheep? Hey! Are you Ida? We found Mr. Wool. Oh, Mr. Wool, you're safe. I got so worried about you. Don't do that again. And you too. Thank you so much for bringing him back. How can I call you? I'm Lavette. And I'm Siona. It's so lovely to meet you. You're not from around here. Please, let me repay your kindness with warm food and a good night's sleep. Oh, that would be amazing. Thank you so much. Don't even mention it. Oh, one question. How did you know my name was Ida? Oh, Mr. Wool told us. Mr. Wool? Mama! Uh, Mama, you're back! Uh, who are these girls? <laughs> these are Lavette and Sinak, dear. They helped bring Mr. Wool back. Oh, thank you. Mom, guess what? I made up a story with my dolls. There is this brave knight and a fierce dragon and... All right, all right. Let's save the storytelling for later. Let's go to the table now. Oh, okay. So, you're adventurers, right? Do you have cool weapons and fight monsters? <laughs> well, sometimes we do. But adventuring isn't always about fighting monsters. There's a lot more to it. That is right. It's about exploring new places, meeting new people, and sharing adventures together. Wow, that sounds amazing! I want to be an adventurer too! Love that! Can you show me how to use a longbow? I have created my own shortbow. Enough! We have talked about this. No adventures. <laughs> I... I'm sorry for that outburst. It's just, it's just, I lost my mother to adventuring. She was even adventuring while she was pregnant. After she gave birth to me, she settled down to raise me. I had no father, but still she was longing for her adventures. So when I grew up and I was ready to live by myself, she left again. The adventure was calling her. She was old, but still, she had that fire in her. And that fire took her away from me. Sometimes, I don't even know if she really loved me, or I was just a burden to her adventures. I was a grown-up woman. 
I didn't need someone to take care of me anymore. But I still wanted my mother back. But she never returned. Some friends of hers brought back news of her passing. My daughter, Lily, she she dreams just like her grandmother did. Always lost in her own stories. Creating adventures with her dolls. And even crafting that little bow. But I can't bear the thought of her facing the same dangers that took my mother away. I won't let her get hurt. All I have left for my mother is this necklace. I won't live that story again with my daughter. Can I see this necklace? Sure. I knew I sensed some kind of magic on you. This is quite exquisite, Ida. There's something magical about it. Magical? Yes, there's an illusion spell here. Maybe a message or something. Hmm. Seems like if you say the word that it's written on it, it will trigger the spell. You mean the little gem? My sweet Ida, being a woman is a journey filled with twists and turns, challenges and triumphs. In my adventures, I discovered the strength that resides in every woman's heart, the power to overcome, to love, and to shape her own destiny. Yes, I ventured into the unknown, faced mythical beasts, and changed the fate of many people's lives for the better. But amidst all those grand tales, my greatest treasure is you. Your dreams, your laughter, and the warmth of your presence. Life is your canvas, my dear, and you are the artist. Choose your own colors, paint your own path, and may it be filled with joy and fulfillment. Life is an adventure, my love, and I want you to live it with no regrets. Whether you choose to be an adventurer, a mother, both, or none of these, remember, you are a hero. You always leave something behind, something better than you found it. I love you, and I'm proud of the life you choose to pursue. I hope I see you and little Lily soon. Take care. Your mother was an amazing woman. She shared some profound thoughts. The life of an adventure is incredibly beautiful, even though most of the time is filled with challenges, fierce battles, confronting terrifying monsters. Well, uh, what Siona is trying to say is that um, life throws different challenges at us. Sometimes it's like facing a behir, or being a parent, or chasing dreams that seem impossible, or even trying to find our own place in this vast world, which can be pretty scary. But you see, we shape our own destinies. There will come a time when your little girl won't be so little anymore. She's got her unique path to follow and her own legacy to leave. Judging by her grandma and mother, who are both incredible and strong women, I'm certain your daughter will be amazing too. You are right. I thought I could shield her from everything in this world forever. But yes, they grow up so fast. <laughs> I should go and talk to her. Thank you. Terrifying monsters? Really? Um, sorry. I thought being honest was the right thing to do. <sighs> we should work a bit more on these social skills of yours. Uh-oh. Darling. Look, my precious. I am sorry. I didn't want to hurt your feelings. It's just that I'm worried for you, for being safe. But on the other hand, you are a very smart and strong girl. And I know that everything you want to accomplish, you will. And even when life gets hard, then I will always be here by your side waiting for you. Supporting you till you begin again. I love you, Mama. You are the greatest. 
Me too, my love. Me too. Um, Mom, does that mean Lovette can teach me how to use my short bow? <laughs> All right, dear. I think they will be okay with that. They are nice. Yes. Yes, they are. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the B&D Podcast. Today, we've got something special lined up. As we were brainstorming ideas for this episode, it hit us. The 8th of March is International Women's Day. Although we might be a tad late in making the occasion, we decided to dedicate this episode to all the incredible female characters who have left a lasting impression on us in movies, series, books, games, and the vast realms of fantasy in general. So, even though the date has passed, our discussion is a heartfelt tribute to the strength, resilience, and inspiration these characters bring to the forefront of our imaginations. But, since we are talking about inspiring women, and before we jump into our discussion, a special shout out and heartfelt thanks to the talented voice actors who have participated in today's intro. Three amazing and talented women who have graced us with their voices. A shout out to Deb Lawrence, who played Ida, Maria Amelia Park, who played Little Lily, and to Lovey Tavares, who played Ida's mother. Your contributions are greatly appreciated and we're thrilled to have you as part of our podcast journey. You will find more info about them down in the description box, so go and check them out. Now, without further notice, let's begin. Val, who is your all-time favorite female character from the world of fantasy and what qualities make her inspiring to you? That is such a hard question, to be honest. <laughs> I swear, even if you gave me hours and hours to think about it, I wouldn't be able to choose one and not change my mind right after. I have a couple that are always on my mind as my favorites, like Shadowheart from Baldur's Gate 3, or Morgan from Dragon Age, and Triss Margold from The Witcher. But um, I do feel like I need to pay tribute to the first female character in a fantasy setting that shaped me since a very young age. And I'm talking about Piper Hallowell from Charmed. Of course. <laughs> she was the first witch I ever knew. She made me believe that women can be mothers, they can run a successful club, pursue their careers, and also fight demons. That women can also be fair and loyal and independent, love deeply, sacrifice themselves for the greater good and their loved ones, but also while they're focusing on their inner strength. So it's really part of my best childhood memories. I remember trying to so hard to freeze time <laughs> and vanquish whoever made me feel angry back when I was in primary school. I remember reading about witchcraft for the first time and feeling empowered and thinking that magic is all around us if you just believe. I know that most people might find Charmed problematic because women were extremely sexualized in the media back then. But for the eyes of an eight-year-old, she was powerful and I wanted to be like her growing up. I've never been obsessed with Charmed, to be honest, but I can totally understand the reason you are drawn into that character. As for me, that changes every once in a while. <laughs> uh, in the state of mind that I'm in right now, I would say Tirande Whisperwind from the World of Warcraft. What makes her truly inspiring to me is not only her exceptional leadership amongst the Night Elves, but also the depth of her character. Tirande is a symbol of strength, resilience, and determination. She navigates the challenges of leading her people with grace and wisdom, making tough decisions for the greater good. But what also resonates with me is her enduring love for Malfurion Storm Rage, you know, uh, Tyrande's commitment to their relationship, despite the challenges posed by Malfurion's frequent ventures to the Emerald Dream, showcases a powerful blend of love and determination. Her character beautifully embodies the complexity of being both a fierce warrior and a devoted lover, making her a truly captivating and inspiring figure to me. Uh, Malfurion is one of my favorite characters, to be honest. The whole story between him, Tyrande, and Illidan is so nostalgic. It reminds me of the years that was playing World of Warcraft. These were the times. They were. <laughs> but yes, I agree with you. She's amazing. She is. Anyway, I've got another question for you. Mm -hmm. In fantasy, literature, and media, 
How have representations of female characters evolved over the years? Are there specific characters that stand out in this evolution? Um, over the years, the representation of female characters in fantasy literature and media has evolved significantly. We've witnessed a shift from traditional stereotypes to more nuanced and empowered portrayals. However, I do find it problematic when productions force the empowerment of women merely for the show, without depth or authenticity. It can come across as performative rather than the genuine support for women's roles in storytelling. Personally, what I appreciate most is when a narrative features a strong female supporting character with genuine power, determination, and complexity. I don't necessarily insist on the protagonist being a woman. Instead, I enjoy it even more when the supporting character steals the spotlight with her strength, resilience, and compelling narrative arc. A great example that comes to my mind um, is a character, Yushan Guy, from uh, Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint, a man who I'm currently obsessed. At first, you might anticipate the typical romantic interest trope, a woman who has no powers, and the MC, who is super duper strong, uh, comes to her rescue. But Yusen Gai defies all expectations. She begins as a mysterious character, knowing almost nothing about her, and later on, boom, she evolves into a powerhouse with incredible abilities, fighting with the strings of fate, since she is chosen by the Olympus Pantheon, and her character development adds layers of depth that make her uh, truly captivating. And I find myself rooting for her even more than the male protagonist, showcasing the impact of well-crafted, empowered, supporting female characters in fantasy storytelling. Can you think of any specific character you want to mention about that? I can't think of a specific character, uh, to be honest, but I do want to say that I feel like over the years, the representation of women in fantasy and specifically in TV and films um, has improved dramatically. I remember watching superhero films growing up and TV shows like Xena the Warrior Princess and oh, Hercules, yeah. The Legendary Journeys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where women were completely over-sexualized in every possible way. Yes, they were fierce fighters, but most of them were underdressed and they were showing off their skinny, amazing bodies deliberately, which created stereotypes of the image of women in fantasy. The same happened in video games, even if we like them and even if we love them, like, for <laughs> example, League of Legends <laughs> and many others. It's completely different when it's your choice to choose to wear whatever you want as a person because you feel confident and beautiful and completely different for men game designers to force unrealistic body stereotypes and promote the misrepresentation of femininity or what i prefer to call sexualization of women masked as femininity that only gave eating disorders and trauma to our generation i do feel like nowadays we see more strong female leads or supporting female characters who are cherished for their bravery their mind their free spirit their strong willed persona their depth and their willpower. And they're not only judged by the way that they look. Obviously, Hollywood will always be Hollywood, and this toxic patterns cannot change overnight. But I'm glad that there are more and more people who try to promote that it's okay to be different, and you don't have to look a specific way to be a superhero, for example. And the fact that they're experimenting with creating looks for female characters that not only complement them, but also make them feel confident. And it's a tough subject to discuss for me, especially since I was a kid, I thought that women should look a specific way. Not too chubby, but with perky bums or breasts. Not too skinny though, because then you don't have enough fat on you to look curvy enough. And for years I starved myself to even try to look half as good as my fictional idol. So I feel strongly about this subject. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go to the next question uh, that I've got for you, Zephy. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's important to have strong and independent female characters in fantasy? I think it is crucial for several uh, reasons. Firstly, it breaks away from traditional gender stereotypes, as we said before, promoting diversity and inclusivity in storytelling. This diversity allows for a broader range of narratives and perspectives, making fantasy worlds uh, more reflective of our own diverse reality. Personally, I find inspiration in well-developed female characters because uh, it allows me to relate to their experiences, emotions, and journeys. Feeling a connection with characters, uh, regardless of gender, uh, 
enhances the storytelling experience. It's about more than just representation. It's about resonating with the struggles, triumphs, and growths of characters who navigate fantastical worlds. Strong and independent female characters contribute to a richer, uh, more immersive storytelling experience, fostering empathy, understanding, and empowerment among audiences. What about you? I, I totally agree with that. Is living in a society where women are criticized for choosing to be mothers and stay home to raise their kids, in a society that rails against the ones who decide to follow their careers instead of having children or getting married. It is painfully exhausting to be able to catch a break and breathe normally for one day. I do feel like I'm an escapist, so, and as a child, I was lucky enough to find role models in books and films who inspired me to fight my own dragons and demons through believing in myself and choosing to be different. And I do want to keep seeing that in fantasy characters, no matter the race, gender, sexuality, physical traits, and abilities. I just want to see realness and depth in people, fierce endurance and willingness to fight, no matter what the cost is. Young people need to have something to believe in, someone who will inspire them to be better. I have to add something uh, on this, because you should do what you want to do. If you're happy with uh, having a family and a kid, as we've said in, uh, in the intro of this episode, if that what makes you happy, then go for it. <laughs> it's amazing. It's uh, We support it 100%. And if you don't want a family and you don't want kids... It's okay too. I it's mean, fine. <laughs> if you want a career, go for it. Just go for it. Everything is great and everything is fine if you just uh, want to follow this path. If you are happy with the path you choose to follow, you're totally fine and you just go for it. Don't let labels to stop you from um, trying what you really want to do. Don't let labels like, um, you're a grown old woman, you have to uh, make a family and you don't want to make a family. So don't, don't listen to them. Just do what you want to do. Do what makes you happy. Do what exactly. gives you a peace of mind. And on the contrary, if you want to be, you know, a housewife, uh, to be a woman who wants to raise her children. That's amazing too. Don't let others saying that, oh, you're so young. You have to do things. You have to focus on yourself. You have to do more. No, <laughs> if you want that, then go for it. Because being a mom is actually a full-time job yeah, as well. <laughs> it's a full-time job. and It is really hard. I really appreciate uh, and admire this woman who managed to do both being a parent and also working hard for uh, their jobs. I mean, it's exhausting, but yeah, do what makes you happy. Uh, actually, Val, do you have a favorite fantasy world that showcases inspiring women? Thing again. <laughs> it's really hard to choose, Effie. I know. This is a tough subject for you, actually. <laughs> it is. It is. But we're getting there. So <laughs> yeah. I do want to talk about the world of Sapkowski. Um, the world of the Witcher, um, sorcerers are so powerful and have control over their lives. I admire their fire they have in them, their determination to fight for what they believe in, the idea of giving in to chaos but finding a way of controlling yourself altogether, the way they establish their position in society, the political influence they have. It feels like they're weaving a web. They change the course of the future according to their liking or their need of survival. They sacrifice so much to gain this power, but in a way, it all makes sense in the end and it's worth it. I totally agree with you uh, on this. The Witcher universe definitely showcases inspiring women. In particular, Ciri, my favorite girl, <laughs> stands out as a <laughs> phenomenal course. character uh, the Witcher series, both in the books and the video games, portray Ciri as a resilient, powerful, and complex individual. Ciri's journey is marked by challenges and hardships, but her strength and determination shine through. Uh, she defies expectations, uh, norms, and embraces her destiny on her terms. You know, she is a multidimensional character, and the depth of her story contributes significantly to the richness of the Witcher universe. You know, it's refreshing to see a female character like Ciri, who not only possesses incredible abilities, but also demonstrates profound growth, uh, resilience and agency in a fantasy world filled with political intrigue and supernatural elements. 
And as you said, not only her, but Trace and Jennifer too. And not only them, but also other female figures like Kira Metz or Anna Henrietta from the Blood and Wine expansion or Philippa. All these women wield political influence and some of them magical power showcasing a form of female leadership. They are not even the lead characters, but honestly, who cares? <laughs> you still remember them because they are so well written and so badass and so great and, you know, great in general. Exactly. And every single one of them plays a part in the story. And mm -hmm. it's amazing what they accomplish all together. But my next question is, how do you think the representation of women in fantasy media influences soci societal perceptions and expectations of women in real life? The way women are shown in fantasy stories, um, like movies or games with magic and adventures, they can affect how people think about women in real life. If the stories make women look strong, smart, and able to do many things, it helps break all the ideas about what women can or can do. This gives everyone different examples of what women can be, like leaders, fighters, or heroes. But if the stories show women in not so good ways, like only focusing on their looks or making them seem less important, it can keep old ideas alive. It might make people think women should only be a certain way, which isn't fair. But on the other hand, as I've said before, it's important to find a balance. While it's great to show women as strong and capable, overselling their power just for the sake of it, without depth or real character, can also be a problem. You know, I hate it when, they, when productions do this, just for the money, just for the show. I hate that. Don't force it on me because, you know, because it sells. Do it because it's genuine. Do it because this character, this woman is strong and she inspires us in every way. It's about portraying a woman authentically with strengths and flaws, just like any other character. It helps in creating more relatable and interesting stories. And since we started talking about The Witcher again, uh, Tale is All This Time, I'll use Tris and Yennefer for uh, this example. They are both strong and cool individuals, but they're not perfect. Tris tries to make Geralt hers, even though he's into Yennefer. Well, don't argue on this, please. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Please. <laughs> we don't have the time. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer gets jealous too, even though she is hot and beautiful and smart and powerful. And it's like a love triangle drama. And it's kind of fun, especially when you play as Geralt and choose to sleep with both of them. I love that sweet revenge they get in the end. For all of you players out there, you know who you are. But yes, even though they are strong figures to the game, they also have feelings and flaws, just like real people. And that's what makes them interesting and relatable. Since you talked about this, I have to admit, <laughs> I do hate that part, an aspect of the story sometimes. Women pitting against each other is so last year. And we have to start blaming leading women on as well, like girl did to Tress. <laughs> <laughs> and we started. <laughs> yeah, because... I'm just, I'm triggered now. I don't think any woman would try so hard to get someone without being given some, I don't know, breadcrumbs by a guy, especially <laughs> a guy like Geralt. Because for anyone who read the first two books, you know that Geralt was always, always dancing around with other people, even while he was supposed to be with him. Uh, yep. And also okay. Tris and Geralt <laughs> weren't the thing in the books, okay? The same way that they were in the video games, obviously. But let's just say that all three of them are problematic in a way mm -hmm. <laughs> and they all have flaws and it's interesting and real and relatable to see because these things can happen in real life but back to what you were saying about perceptions and expectations of women in fantasy media i think we have moved forward from the whole damsel in distress era of representation of women and it's really refreshing to see more and more strong female leads. I personally am really appreciative of this because we have lived so long in the shadows in a way and it's good to finally feel appreciated. I'm not a mom, obviously, but I'm an auntie and I want my nephews to grow up to become respectful to the world and treat everyone equally without judging them for their life choices or their appearance. As long as we have characters that people can relate to, can look up to, admire and get inspired by, then I think the world will be a better place. I don't like any kind of stereotypes in general. I don't want to follow or support any of them because I feel we shouldn't be expecting people to be or look a specific way. Everyone is their own person and we need to embrace a 
accepting yourself the way you are or the way you want to be above all. I agree so, with you. I have to I'm say. glad. <laughs> and uh, about that Trees and Jennifer thing, I love that in the end, when Gerald was um, a total jackass, they united and they were like, okay, <laughs> let's show him. Let's show him. Let's get revenge. Let's get revenge. We kind of deserves it, but don't get me started. With Gerald, <laughs> please. Um, yeah, I, I love Jennifer and Gerald together because they're so toxic. They can just stay <laughs> together and just let everyone else be free of their toxicness. So their, to their toxicity. <laughs> so um, I'm excited for the next question because uh, we're going to talk about D and D next. Oh, okay. So in Dungeons and Dragons, have you encountered or played as a female character that left a lasting impression? Lovette could have easily taken the job uh, if the campaign ended, but since it didn't, I certainly chose Dorothy. Yay! What a woman. Heartbroken by her half-orc fiancé who betrayed her, killed her king, and took over the city with his orc tribe. But did that stop her? No. Not even close. Not even close. <laughs> she never stopped trying to reclaim it, protecting the king's son all the while. She had this perfect mix uh, of fierceness, sweetness, and a good sense of humor. And then it came the day when Dorothy built a whole army and reclaimed her home. When her past beloved told her uh, he truly loved her but couldn't change the past, she almost took him out. Instead, she showed him the door and never looked back. Because just like yeah. Dorothy... We don't accept any balloonies. And we don't. Neither should you, folks. Remember this. <laughs> we don't. We will not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so inspired now. Thank you, Dorothy. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy. And Dorothy I, thought... is, I was just going to say that Dorothy is literally the actual representation of a strong female lead in a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. <laughs> so it will always hold a special place in my heart for that. I think a second inspiring character in this campaign was Brianna. Yeah, because of Dorothy, though, um, she was my ranger, basically, and she was looking up to Dorothy so much, she took some of her good traits. She was stubborn, yes, but she was giving and as loyal as a dog or maybe, let's say, a bear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Since he had <laughs> her way of bear cursing. <laughs> she was independent and strong-willed. Nothing would stop her from achieving her goals. She made me proud for playing her, really. Brianna started as a person desperate to find a cure for her curse. And I saw her growing into a person who slowly but steadily was accepting herself the way she was. And that is so beautiful to watch. And it gave me hope, my poor baby. I loved Bri. She was so carefree, actually. <laughs> I love that. And she was always trying to... She was always trying actually really hard to be better for the people who accepted her and became her friends. She was a good bear, if not in a full moon. <laughs> a full moon has become my biggest fear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. I understand that. I miss them both. I do miss them. Anyway, tell me, Zephy, are there any fantasy books or movies or series where women break traditional gender roles that you enjoy? Oh, absolutely. Uh, in the world of books, since I'm currently reading The War of the Ancients, uh, World of Warcraft books, uh, I'd say Tiranda for all the reasons I have mentioned already. Anime has its share of powerful women challenging norms, and I can't get enough of 2B from Nier Automata. She's not just an android, she's a symbol of resilience and defiance against an oppressive system, Aquarius. <laughs> but moving on to the series, The Dragon Prince features characters like General Amaya, a deaf military leader challenging stereotypes and proving strength knows no boundaries. And I love this character. She has such Dorothy vibes. Oh my God. Yes. Every time I watch it, I'm like, this is Dorothy. Yes. If she was deaf. <laughs> She, she even has the exact appearance in class. And uh, Dorothy was played before uh, the release of Dragon Prince, for your information. So imagine my excitement when I saw General Lamaya. I was pitching. She stole your idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but never mind. I let them. <laughs> anyway, in movies, who could forget Eowyn, actually, from Lord oh. of the Rings? Her cards on the battlefield, an iconic line, I am no man. 
and she faces the witch king of Fangmore, you know, is etched in fantasy history. I remember watching the scene as a child and my imagination ran wild. These portrayals truly make me truly make the fantasy genre richer and more inspiring. I've I really I have been trying <laughs> the whole time not to talk about this, but I can't control myself any longer. I want to talk about J.R.R. Tolkien so badly. Re release the beast. And I promise <laughs> I'll try to keep it brief. Um specifically about the character of Elwyn since you mentioned her. Mm-hmm. Um, but before I talk about her, I need to say a few things so I won't get judged by people. Uh, I've read the books years ago and I loved them. But I also loved Peter Jackson's trilogy. Mm -hmm. No matter what the hardcore talking fans say, because let's just all admit it, we grew up with these films in a way. I do want to say that I agree with them on one thing, that indeed the Hobbit films were so stretched and long for no reason, especially when you know that the book is literally less than 300 pages. But I'll say it now <laughs> with fear in my voice. In my Don't opinion, be afraid. I'm not afraid. Mm. Toriel was a good addition in the films. She um, was. She was. As, yeah, because it was a way of representing women fighters in Middle Earth. But of course, of course, her story had loads of extra unnecessary elements that caused such hatred in her role, I believe. I'm not going to talk about the whole romance between a dwarf and an elf. It's fine. Let's just move on. <laughs> also, <laughs> making Arwen more vital to the story was a good call by Peter Jackson because she became such an inspiring figure for young girls through the films. But people need to realize that her absence in the books didn't imply by any means her unimportance. It just meant that she wasn't an actual warrior to take part in the war. And keep in mind that we're talking about a book that was published in the 50s. And we do need to remember that re the representation of women cannot be the same with a book that was written only five years ago, for example. Mm -hmm. I adore the way Tolkien chose to create a fierce female character such as Elwyn. In times like the ones he lived, it's extraordinary. And that's why he will always have my admiration. Fantasy female leads were never going to be the same after Eowyn's speech against the Witch King. That part in the book specifically where she says, But no living man am I. You look upon a woman. Oh. Eowyn, I am Eowyn's daughter. You stand between me and my lord and can be gone if you be not deathless for living or dark and dead, I will smite you if you touch him. Okay, I think I made my dream come true just now <laughs> by reciting this out loud for the first time and it kind of feels amazing. You know, that gave me goosebumps. <laughs> but um, I think Toriel was a cool addition to the movies too. Having a woman fighter in Middle Earth was a good move. And as for Arwen, she is my brighter star. I love her. If you want him. Come and claim him. Oh, oh <laughs> damn. <laughs> <His bums. laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to ask you the next question. Um, can you recommend any fantasy stories with relatable and strong female characters, Effie? Well, I think Star Wars stands out in this one. Of course. Especially the character of Ahsoka Tano, introduced in the animated series, has become a symbol of resilience and growth. Her journey from a young Padawan to a wise and powerful Force user resonates with many fans and me. And I still remember the iconic I am no Jedi line, and I feel the goosebumps. Okay, um, now it hit me. I am probably kind of rebellious with all this. <laughs> <laughs> I am not this and I am not that lines. Tell me, well, is it because of me being an Aquarius? I don't know. Don't get me started. It has <laughs> always been written in the stars for you, Zephy, a rebellious <gasps> Aquarian with a fiery Leo moon, always passionate about the things he loves. Okay, <laughs> now I understand. Now I understand. Sometimes I feel like, uh, you know, you are a star druid. <laughs> Actually, I am the star druid and you are my star <laughs> map for casting spells. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, an important addition, the impact of Princess Leia's character in the original Star Wars movie, New Hope, released uh, in 1977, cannot be overstated. At a time when strong and independent female characters were not as common uh, in mainstream media, Leia shattered stereotypes and became a groundbreaking figure. 
her strength, leadership were revolutionary, influencing generations of fans and future creators. And Carrie Fisher's portrayal of Leia Organa set a presented for a woman in fantasy and science fiction. I agree. Princess Leia was indeed the first female lead in a sci-fi universe, and she did actually pave the way for every other strong female lead in the world of fantasy. But I do want to talk about one of my favorite animations and its story, um, The Dragon Prince. Mm -hmm. Both Rayla and Claudia have achieved something incredible, and I haven't felt this excitement for characters since Avatar The Last or Better came out. I mean, the old animated, <laughs> not the new one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they're both proving that life is not black or white. It is actually gray. And all our choices can be morally right, but also wrong. Fighting for power and survival, fighting for the greater good or to save your loved ones, staying loyal till the end, not being afraid to sacrifice yourself if it means you'll keep everyone else safe. I do have a soft spot for the villains, always. Mm -hmm. and we Claudia, know. <laughs> and Claudia has proven herself to be a wild card with a strong cause. And Rayla, on the other hand, her trauma and thirst for revenge, her undying need to prove herself. Oh, it's just so great to watch. Mm -hmm. This character seems so relatable in a way. And also, since I talked about the Dragon Prince, I cannot not talk about Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra. Preceding the success of the Dragon Prince, the female characters of Avatar have proven that it doesn't matter how tall or small you are, your power comes from within. If you become one with your element and accept yourself the way you are like Katara and Toph did, you will become the greatest version of yourself. Or if you try not to give up and train hard like Suki did, you won't need to rely on anything else apart from your inner strength. These two universes are so different in a way, but so similar at the same time in my eyes. And it feels impossible not to relate with the character's struggles and wins. Dragon Prince is so cool. And Avatar is even cooler for me. <laughs> and I love this morally gray concept. My next question is, what qualities make a female character inspiring to you in a fantasy setting, Zephy? In fantasy stories, I admire female characters who go beyond typical roles. Um, they're strong, uh, resilient, and true to themselves. Whether in books, shows, or movies, those characters break stereotypes and show us uh, that women are not just one-dimensional, they're complex and relatable. By showing women as both strong and vulnerable, these stories empower us and challenge old-fashioned ideas about gender. Also, when we talk about fantasy, I much love and appreciate a great outfit, cool swords, and even cooler <laughs> magical powers. I love a good power play. <laughs> of course. And I couldn't agree more with everything you said. I love complex and intricate personalities, characters who would sacrifice everything for the sake of humanity, independent, rebellious souls, who are not afraid to get their hands dirty in order to save their loved ones. Women who are vulnerable and choose to use their weaknesses are as their biggest strengths give me a bow and arrow girl please i don't yes. need much in this world yes 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 exactly the rebellious one yeah <laughs> the specifically <laughs> but anyway guys this is it for today's session we hope you enjoyed it uh we wish to know about your favorite female characters in fantasy thank you for listening to this episode and until the next one may all your roles be a natural 20 bye bye